Hi there. I had a situation come up at the clinic where I work that got me thinking about empathy and compassion and how empathy and compassion either help or hinder our flourishing. I love the word flourishing. I first learned it from Martin Seligman, the father of positive psychology. It means living the good life. I want you to, want you to know that no matter where you are in your journey to flourishing, that it is possible to live the good life. No matter what you're struggling with, whether you're struggling with depression or anxiety or addiction or burnout, it is possible to uh, live the good life. Like many of us don't get to learn empathy and compassion. I came from a dysfunctional family and my primary caretakers couldn't model it for me. So there was no way for me to learn it. And I did the best I could in my life, but my life had some issues uh, that I had to overcome. And you can too, because uh, it is possible. From the way my mother mothered me, um, when I had hurt feelings, she would make fun of me. Or what was worse, she would ignore me. Sometimes she tried to shame me. The only compliment that I remember from her is, you are smart, you are beautiful, and you are talented. You shouldn't feel that way. Other times she would get angry. And uh, I've learned another strategy that my mother didn't use uh, from observation, and that is that people who are uncomfortable with another person's pain will try to jump to solving the problem rather than listening. The effects of those five strategies left me feeling like I was not heard, respected, or understood. I developed an enormous pain body. I learned that term from Eckhart Tolle. And I had empathy hunger. I wanted someone to listen to me, to understand the pain that I had experienced. And I tried to make friends with people using my pain. And all it did was push people away. Because when we don't have, don't have empathy and compassion as a part of our life, we don't have social intuition. And so we push people away. <clears throat> On the other end of the spectrum of possibilities is those who turn their feelings off and they become hard and rigid. Another one is to just be happy. Well, we can't turn off one of our emotions and still have the others. So the happiness is not a genuine happiness that we can connect to. And that leads to really poor social intuition. It has been said that the longest journey is the 13 inches between our brain and our heart. And in 2009, I made a decision to do the Pathways Core training to get into my heart. And what I found is that the wisdom and intelligence and empathy and compassion was already in, available to me in my heart. I just had to learn how to listen to my heart. <clears throat> we have learned from uh, neurobiology research that the heart really does have intelligence. It has 100,000 neurons that communicate to the brain as well as the brain communicating to the heart. There is two-way communication between our brain and our heart. We know that there is a way now, today, to rewire the brain for empathy and compassion and to increase the possibility of flourishing for ourselves. And this comes from the research done on meditation. We know that heart-brain, heart 
meditations increase our capacity for empathy and compassion, including self-compassion. So um, some of those meditations are open heart, heart math, mindfulness-based stress reduction, loving kindness, tonglen, and radical forgiveness. If you are struggling with flourishing, I hope that you will consider finding a meditation that uh, connection with someone or even just go out on your own and start investigating heart meditations. I would like to invite you to join me no matter where you are in your journey to flourishing. I offer a free Wednesday night meditation every week at 5.30 Central Daylight Time. It's offered on Zoom. The number is 201-862-2308. I'm Diana Liz, founder of Rejuvenating Lifestyle for Mind, Body, Health, and Happiness.